Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Welcome to a big Roll for Crit news roundup here in the aftermath of Spiel Digital, which is taking place online this year, as opposed to its usual place in Germany. People around the world would gather to play board games and try out new releases and learn about upcoming titles as well. Hopefully we can fill some of that in for you, but uh, usually we don't go to, to Essen. We don't make that trip. We aren't able to travel that much, but uh, now everybody got to experience a little bit of it at home, which was kind of nice this year. It is, though. I, I do have a question. If we're going to continue these uh, digital conventions, if you name a convention after the place it's in, like Essen or like uh, New York City Comic Con, if you do it online, is it now like Chrome Comic Con? <laughs> it no longer <laughs> takes place in a in a location. It takes place in your mind. It's everywhere you are. It's just oh, World oh, Comic Con. I, I, I don't want to go to Will's Mind Comic Con. That that's a <laughs> bad place. Well, uh, we'll we'll stick to Spiel. We'll stick to Spiel Digital this week. Lots of cool announcements and other things from recent times in the board game world coming at you. Fantasy Flight has finally unveiled their next entry in the Descent series, Descent Legends of the Dark. They are not calling this a third edition of Descent Journeys in the Dark. Rather, they consider it different enough and unique enough to be its own beast entirely. Big changes from previous Descent titles. This is going to be fully cooperative. There will no longer be a one overlord who is playing against the rest of the players. It's also going to be app-driven the same way Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth or uh, Mansions of Madness Second Edition were. So the app will handle a lot of different elements, uh, Things on the map, uh, character stats, items that you acquire, etc. This is going to include lots of miniatures, some 3D terrain elements to make things really pop. There's a new mechanic involving double-sided cards. So uh, you have two cards that fit into one sleeve and you can ready those cards, flipping them over and changing up your weapon styles. So depending on what you're doing, you might want to change to a different tactic for a different area of your certain mission that you're in. And again, Again, the app is going to handle your campaign, which is going to be included in this initial box set, but will be followed up later on after the release of it by an Act 2 and an Act 3 as expansions, which they say will complete the story that's begun in this title. So I think it's not a surprise to me that they are following the Lord of the Rings model, making this fully cooperative. I think... At least I feel like we definitely expected that. It seemed like the natural progression for this system and what people were looking for. Um, does this uh, excite you or anything in particular that you think is interesting that looks new or different about this new Descent? Well, from what we can tell, I know some people may be a little disappointed and want to be able to bring everything along because I know even though Descent had second edition, there was a conversion kit to bring a good chunk of one into two. There was. But at the same time, this does mean that if you didn't have all that stuff, this is you can start here without feeling guilty. Like, I don't have all the game. You have everything that's for this game, you know, and moving forward. The app thing, I mean, in Descent, I think Descent 2nd Edition started releasing expansion packs that didn't require that Mastermind or Dark Lord. Something that's I true. like a lot uh, because, one, it means that as you play through a campaign, only one person gets to experience a thing and... You have to find a whole new play group, maybe, if you want to try out the other side. And sometimes it'd be really annoying. We found with the rules, the apps we found with both Mansions and Lord of the Rings are more of a clearer path, we think, and really help everyone play together in the game instead of sort of like playing two separate games. I, it's one, one of the times where I think asymmetrical gaming did not work out. I'm, I'm for the app. I, know, I, I, I'm assu I assume some people will not be. Yeah, there's always going to be people who, if you don't like app games, you're not going to be happy with this. You know, here we we, we love them. I, th I think it'll work great. I'm very excited to try out uh, this new version of it. It sounds like they have some interesting new ideas in there, some, some cool uh, differences. But just from looking at, you know, the character cards and everything, it looks relatively... Like, I was able to glean, like, okay, yeah, that's your health. That's your surge ability from attacking. It looks 
a little more straightforward. Whereas when I do look at something like Journeys in Middle Earth, uh, I look at one of those character cards and they, to me at least, they look a little bit more intimidating. There's like more text, more stuff going on. Uh, maybe this is just me. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but it, it, to me, it looked a little cleaner. Uh, maybe that part of that is the artwork as well. It's sort of more, it's a little cartoony. It's sort of comic book style art. Uh, that I think lends itself to kind of a clearer picture. I expect this to be expensive because, oh, as they said, like I remember the size of that box. <laughs> three, yeah, big box, three D terrain, a lot of stuff going on, and this is scheduled for Q two of twenty twenty one. And they said that the Act two and three, they said to look for them in the months following that release. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Act one later in the year of 2021 also. So that's a lot of content. And I wonder, you know, we'll see how this is able to compete now that stuff like Gloomhaven is out. This is kind of like the return of one of the original big dungeon crawling games, How if they've been able to modernize it well. A long, long time ago, we discussed the Mansions of Madness coming to a digital version on Steam. That seemed to have disappeared like the ancient signs of the Elder Gods. But just like the Elder Gods, they have creeped back, but no longer Mansions of Madness. We now have a new digital game, Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace. Now, they say this is based on the, acc the acclaimed game series, but in the game, apparently an astronomer has died, and you will choose one of many investigators to research and discover what is going on. You, of course, will explore Arkham, including Miskatonic University, but also implies you'll visit Louisiana. And, of course, as this is Arkham Horror, you'll come across cultists and other horrific horrors that will test your sanity and bring you to the edge of madness. There isn't a video yet, or there isn't an actual game to purchase, but we can try to make some guesses from what we know from the little information they've shared with us. They sh we see investigators that are very well versed from the Arkham Horror line, and it does say single player. So I assume this would be more of a sort of finding clues, and I'm curious whether this is going to be a bit more of choosing your own adventure style, which sort of is what Arkham 3rd Edition has. You know, there are multiple endings and story branches. I mean, one thing uh, to be clear is that this is not an adaptation of, Correct, of the board yes. game itself. It's a it's a spin-off video game in that universe. I do not know any campaign that has that title. I will say, the title at first, hearing it like Mother's Embrace, sounds like a great horror movie. Uh, so far, the description, I'm like, that doesn't sound, that sounds like a, just a normal Arkham campaign. <laughs> Observer died, right. check things out, things are bad. <laughs> yeah, it could just be a catchy title. I mean, the thing that's so wild to me about this announcement is, as you said, uh, a year or two ago, I'm not sure the exact time frame, they announced Mansions of Madness, Mother's Embrace. It was the same subtitle, and the, it looked pretty much identical when they revealed that game in terms of the graphical style and everything. So I, I just am wondering what, what happened behind the scenes that it went into limbo for all this time, and now they've decided that Arkham Horror, like, did they actually rework it to be more like Arkham Horror versus Mansions of Madness? Or are they just, did they just say, you know what? They're both Lovecraft. Arkham Horror is selling a little better right now. Let's put that name on it instead. <laughs> My guess is that initially they chose Mansions because they'd be like, look, it's going to be much more story oriented. You know, back then we didn't have Arkham 3rd Edition or the card game, or maybe the card game was just starting. You know, uh, the original Arkham, you just sort of fought against the Elder God running around Arkham. I don't think it was, they had story beats, don't get me wrong, but it's, I, I feel like it's not nearly as, uh, like it didn't have the, 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 the deck of cards, the codex, or mm -hmm. the specific lineup, and I assume it just got caught in limbo, production, whatever happened, and now they're like, oh, let's bring this back. Well, Manja is no longer the story version of Arkham. Everything has a story, and it's really the Arkham line. I do hope, because I do think that this is, this will work well. Like, I don't think it's like something crazy. I think Arkham would make a great video game series. Hell, a digital version of second edition, I think, would be lovely for everyone to just purchase once. Now that that's over with and we're working on third. But, you know, we'll see what happens. A new Pathfinder-themed board game is in the works from Paizo and Giochi Unite. This is a competitive game set in the Age of Lost Omens setting of Pathfinder. It takes place in a labyrinth filled with terrible monsters, and all players will have a character that's running around fighting monsters and upgrading their weapons, gaining experience and new skills as they progress. 
ultimately only one player will be the winner. It will be presumably whoever is the last person left standing, or perhaps it's based on numbers of monsters killed. I'm speculating because we really don't know anything beyond that. They've just announced a little bit, shown off maybe a few art assets, but we haven't had a look at the board or anything. Supposedly, as a labyrinth, it is going to have some element of uh, tiles that will move around and things like that, so you're never going to know exactly what to expect each time that you play. But again, it is fully competitive, so it's not really like a traditional Pathfinder type of experience where you're going on an adventure. It's more like taking the Pathfinder setting and some of maybe the items and spells and things and putting you into this, what sounds like sort of a gladiatorial combat arena. Well, I mean, you could still call it an adventure. It's just an adventure when you've all decided that you're willing to throw an ax into each other's back. <laughs> it's it's something that could happen in a Pathfinder campaign. <laughs> just probably wouldn't be uh, not you know, the one I like want to play, quest. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not against each other, but it'd be cool if it was uh, you know as your party against. Oh yeah, people. no, no, no. I meant against <laughs> each other or something like a that. competitive RPG. That's usually a different beast. Yeah, it's a strange yeah. thing. <laughs> Taking these worlds that have for years just been growing and trying to get them to reach other mediums, I think is a good idea. I mean, D&D's many steps ahead. Are they, I believe they're still in the works for a movie, right? Um, I mean, yes, <laughs> but but uh, I don't know about now, <laughs> but there was talk of another one at some point. My yeah. point <laughs> is that Pathfinder's probably trying to spread itself out more so we can start appearing maybe in other mediums and maybe also make uh, deals there because I don't see why not. Yeah, I mean, the adventure card game was was very successful. People people really like that. So, uh, and I, I think you know, it's a it's a pretty basic fantasy setting for the most part that easily applies itself to a lot of different game styles. Uh, we will see. It's going to be crowdfunded next year, so uh, I'm assuming it's going to be successful. And once it is, we'll see how it actually plays. <laughs> Don't Panic Games has announced Naruto Ninja Arena during the Chuni exam where they're all trying to fight each other in order to become uh, professional ninjas. In this game, you'll be rolling dice but not taking turns. You'll be rolling them all together, trying to quickly gather up these dice in order to perform certain ninjutsus in, in order to defeat your opponents, take them out, and be the one who comes out on top. Uh, I'm honestly a little surprised that they went with the original Naruto because I know the Naruto Shippuden, which is sort of the second half, was a bit more popular. It's also when they're older. There's a bigger cast of characters. And even then, the, both those ended a while ago. I think right now we're on, yes, uh, if you don't know, the name is very silly, Boruto, which is Naruto's son. I think that's still going. Very clever naming. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you know, I, you'd think they'd go with those characters. I know it's not as popular, or at least I don't think it is. It's not as big of the, as the phenomenon, but it's still like what's in the more zeitgeist of people who enjoy these characters right now. Well, it shows you what I know, because uh, I, I was like, there's more than one. There's like different generations of Naruto. I did not know that. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I thought it, he was always a kid. <laughs> he, it's more like he's like a kid here and then like a teenager. You know, yeah. it's not too far, but he does more of the crazy stuff then. So that's when, like, you get more. I I just think it's you get more of the fun, uh, more crazy storylines. I assume it's a licensing thing, you know. Who maybe they like give that's out true. different seasons to different companies or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's it sounds like kind of a, maybe a fun thing. They said I saw that this is part of a system called Roll and Clash, but I don't know if there are other titles already in using that system or if they have different ones planned for different licenses. But, uh, I mean, I mean you know, the fact that they have a system built around it is encouraging because that must mean that it's probably fun, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the first game to actually use this mechanic, but I would not be surprised to see other things pasted on. I'm just hopefully the mechanics are fun enough to play regardless of whether you are, as Jonathan uh, said, uh, well-versed in the lore of the world. Steamforged Games, known for adapting video games into big, heavy miniatures titles like Dark Souls, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Resident Evil 2, have now set their sights on something smaller with Pac-Man the Card Game. This is a card game for two to four players with the level one deck, or if you play with the upgraded level two deck, which is included in that kit, uh, then you can play with up to eight players. You are trying to collect fruit and dot cards that will give you points, but you don't want to get caught with three ghost cards. If you do, you're out of the game. Uh, this is just a $10 
quick little card game it plays that they say in 15 to 25 minutes. Uh, so I think this seems like Steamforge, maybe this is their approach at trying to get some more mainstream consideration and not go all in on the, uh, you know, games that have to be kickstarted and that cost $112 to back with all their miniatures and everything included. They did do the Dark Souls card game, so it's not their first uh, non-miniatures game, but it certainly, I think, to my knowledge, is the cheapest at only $10. And uh, I wonder if this will be a really big success for them that maybe will help fund more of those future bigger projects. I mean, when I looked at Horizon Zero Dawn, I'm like, who's looking for a mini game of that? But Pac-Man, now I'm like, that's exactly what I want minis of. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, it's good to have a balance of those heavy mini games, something smaller like this. Uh, and it seems they're continuing with the licensing uh, system, which has its ups and downs. But I'm curious, at the very least, I think you could do something interesting with some with a card game with Pac-Man. Yeah, I do think the cards get a little more advanced, too. There's, like, power cards. You can, you know, switch hands with other people. It sounds like a very... It sounds like they're going after the Uno crowd with it. I don't think this is one that's really going to thrill, uh, you know, more hardcore gamers like us. But uh, it, it could be a fun trifle. It doesn't... You know, it sounds like it will be simple, short, and cute to look at. <laughs> Hopefully in a year or two, we'll be get a second edition that is the Miss Pac-Man version. Z-Man Games has announced a new cooperative game titled Paleo. In this game, you all play as prehistoric humans trying to survive in your time, gathering resources, and complete your cave wall. Now, be careful though. Of course, you'll go out to gather resources in different areas, but of course there will be hazards along the way and other dangerous creatures that will, of course, uh, possibly hurt you, and if you gather too many skulls, you will die. And at the end of the night, you'll have to make sure you can feed your tribe or, once again, gain more skulls. And there'll also be missions for you to complete that, once again, should you miss or un be unable to complete them, gain skulls. This is a cooperative game that has modules that will set up how the game works, making either harder or difficult, or maybe changing the rules up. And it has, as like I said, that prehistoric theme, so you can expect to see, as you see on the cover, mammoths, but I would not be surprised to see some saber-toothed cats, and if we're lucky enough, some other really cool prehistoric creatures. Saber-toothed cats, not saber-toothed tigers, just regular Technically, cats? yes, saber-toothed tigers do not exist. Oh, I see. You had your. It's uh, this is one of those things where it's you're saying it the correct way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Touche this time then. Uh, yeah, this looks cool to me. I like the idea. They said there's like a day night cycle. I don't know exactly how in depth that is, or if it's more just like a two different phases of the game sort of a thing. But the just the layout of it and everything else looked appealing to me. I am curious what those modules bring to the table, whether it's simply yeah. just a difficulty setting or is it like, you know, this module is going to make, make you really focus on crafting when this one is really like you're on a time, quick timer. Don't worry about building stuff. Just gather things as quick as you can. Uh, mm -hmm. So if, I hope it's that because that means more gameplay variety instead of just we get hit by more bad stuff. It's a neat idea that usually we see just in expansions, but I think it's cool to have that included in the base as well. Dragonlance is a big popular universe in the RPG world, stemming all the way back to the 80s. It's had role-playing games, it's had spin-offs and novels published using that framework. And recently, a licensing deal was made between Wizards of the Coast and Margaret Weiss to have published further game materials as well as a trilogy of Dragonlance novels uh, that were supposed to go into development. This deal was made in 2017. Now, in the year 2020, Wizards of the Coast canceled that trilogy, and according to Margaret Weiss, they gave no reason, no explanation for why this was terminated. And now Margaret Weiss is turning around and bringing a lawsuit against Wizards of the Coast for that breach of contract. In addition, they say that they had deals that were, they had in place that were tentative with the Penguin Publishing House for different books, and they say that that deal was damaged by not having a reputation because these books were canceled Canceled. It made them look bad. They didn't have as much clout, as much uh, other other materials to point to to help that deal go through. And they say that because of this, they lost perhaps millions of dollars and are suing Wizards for that as well as part of this lawsuit. Yeah, I, I think even in the article it said like Wizards knew that. 
which is weird. I'm like, are they trying to just hurt them so much so they can rehire them? It's such a weird story. Well, actually, if it's perfect between the 2020. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, I don't know if this was exactly when, if this happened earlier in 2020 and we're just hearing about it now or if it just happened now. But it is so strange as to like, why would they terminate it and not give any reason? I wonder if there was somehow just miscommunication or if they really... Like, I assume Wizards has pretty good lawyers, I think. Like, they would know what a contract says, and they would understand if they were cutting, canceling something, whether or not they were allowed within their right to do that. So either they missed it, or they're correct, and maybe there was somehow a loophole they found, or they just don't care because they're so big, they figure we could win a lawsuit or we can settle. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but it's but it's a strange thing. To, to see, and I wonder what the status is of those unpublished novels, if uh, they're, they will eventually attempt to get the rights back to them, or if they were even fully written at this point, any part of them. I mean, yeah, because you said 2017, correct? Mm-hmm, yeah, it was the original So, deal. I mean, I, I think they it's possible. They must have been working on them. Yeah, and also, you know, as you said, Dragonlance is not, like, new. So there already was a huge fan base that feels pretty let down right now. Yeah, this was, they said, supposed to be kind of uh, like a send-off for the series. You know, it was supposed to be like this final uh, trilogy of of the novels to wrap things up. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. My guess is this will get settled somehow, and Wizards will probably pay them some money, and it won't go to court, but I don't know. It will, I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> so we'll fi I'll find out <laughs> along with everyone else. We've got a ton of releases to go through, so let's hit those now. First off, we've got Aliens Bug Hunt. This is from Upper Deck, but it is not a spinoff for Legendary, which we know them for. It is a dice game that is cooperative where you all place Marines trying to complete missions while killing off those Xenomorphs. Then there's Arkham Horror, an expansion for third edition titled Under Dark Waves. This allows you to visit Kingsport and Innsmouth. And if you pay attention to our channel, I streamed one scenario and will try to stream at least one more before this month ends. Then we've got Ascension Eternal. This is actually a two-player version designed for people to introduce them to the game. This is a basic deck building game with a fantasy theme involving killing creatures, also upgrading your deck and trying to get points either from the cards or from defeating monsters. We've got Calico, which is all about making a beautiful quilt, not to warm yourself, but to build specific patterns for cats, because cats are always more important than you. Cloud City is all about building up a crazy city for a city council to accept and making crazy skyscrapers and connections. We've got Disney Shadow Kingdom, when you will fight to remove these shadows from the kingdom of Disney and regain the magic. Gods Love Dinosaurs is a new dinosaur-themed game from Pandasaurus Games in which you try to build the best ecosystem that can fit the most dinosaurs. The Haunted Mansion Call of the Spirits is based on the Disney ride, The Haunted Mansion, when you will try to talk to as many ghosts as you can while not becoming haunted. And then we got Hello Neighbor Secret Neighbor Party Game. This is based on a video game that I have absolutely no knowledge of, but apparently you play as kids in a neighborhood trying to find out what's in the neighbor's basement, but one of you may be a traitor. Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game is out too. This is based in the world of the video game, but you will be working at the Hunter Lodges, trying to complete missions in order to take on some of these horrific machine beasts and maybe even take on a Thunderjaw. The Lord of the Rings classic Reiner Knizia design is coming back from Fantasy Flight with a new anniversary edition. Same rules, pretty much the same exact game as the original, but with maybe a little nicer coat of paint on it, a couple of new components to make it seem shiny and fresh. There is a brand new expansion for the RPG Mark Berg called Ferratory. This one's from Free League Publishing. It's a Doom Metal RPG. A lot of crazy stuff, crazy artwork in this one. And the expansion includes some new rules, new scenarios, and a monster generator, so you can generate new monsters for your adventures. Mysterium Park is a slightly smaller, more streamlined version of the original Mysterium, a deduction game wherein you're trying to solve clues that a ghost is handing you, trying to figure out what their cards mean, how to interpret the weird artwork on them. This one takes place in a carnival, uh, hence Mysterium Park, so slightly different atmosphere than the original game. 
Pandemic Legacy Season Zero, the final chapter in the Pandemic Legacy series is out there now. It's the prequel to the other two seasons, takes place during the Cold War, so if you've got a group that you can get together during these times, this is one you will definitely want to pick up. You'll get plenty of hours out of it. Now we have Pendulum. You know what this game is from Stonemeyer. We've reviewed it, we've got a how to play for it. It's a real time game where you are flipping timers and moving workers around, constantly trying to keep an eye on which timers are flipping when because they have different lengths. It's a crazy game, very popular, very successful, and it's available for everybody right now. After Pendulum, there is Rambo, the board game from Everything Epic, based on the Rambo series. This one allows you to play as Rambo and his teammates using stealth action gameplay uh, over a variety of missions, including ones that were inspired by and taken from the movies themselves. Sagrada has a new expansion, The Great Facade's Life. This one has new modules that you can add to the game. It has some different dice, some different goal cards for you to try to achieve. This is the stained glass dice drafting game that we are fans of here on Roll for Crit. And now there's another new layer that you can add onto it. Sid Meier's Civilization A New Dawn has a new expansion called Terra Incognita. This one adds a fifth player. You can now play with five players instead of just four, as well as, of course, new leaders for your civilizations, uh, new options for how to build and where to build that make the map more dynamic. Sounds like a must-have if you're a fan of that Civilization game. Splendor has a new addition, Splendor Marvel. It's Splendor, but with Marvel in it. Now, instead of the regular gems you're trying to get, they're Infinity Gems. But otherwise, pretty much, it's Splendor. You probably know what to expect with that one. Vason is another role-playing game from Free League Publishing. This is the Nordic horror game, and their new expansion is called A Wicked Secret and Other Mysteries. This includes four new standalone adventures that you could incorporate together or uh, play them as one-shots with people for this role-playing game, which we enjoyed and reviewed. You can find that on our channel as well. And lastly, for solo gamers out there, you can try out Warp's Edge, which is the second title in Renegade's solo series. Uh, this is a sci-fi game. You have a cool spaceship and you are fighting off aliens and trying to keep your ship alive. A lot of news and a lot of releases for you there, but we also hope you had a fun time uh, during Digital Spiel and you actually were able to go there maybe if you don't usually have the time to actually fly over there. Uh, we'd love to hear what you did and how you celebrated or played games. Uh, I actually finally, I, even though it was last weekend it was available, got the chance to play the Power Rangers deck building game. So I'll probably talk about that a little bit later here, whether it be on the podcast or a video. Mm -hmm. And we also both took part in a stream for a demo of Agamonia from uh, Lout Polite over on the Gaming Rules channel, if you missed that. And that was a lot of fun to play via Tabletop Simulator. So uh, we got slightly more spiel action action in than we normally do in the United States this year. And yeah, uh, some cool announcements, you know, some, some fun stuff uh, to check out right now. Uh, things like Aliens Bug Hunt, which we'll have review for soon, as well as, I mean, obviously stuff like Pendulum, some a ton of huge releases. I don't know if it's because of Spiel uh, or if it's just coincidence, but in the last few weeks, it seems like things have really been ramping up. I've seen like all of these, I think are really big titles. No I think shortage. it's a, a little bit of a mixture. I think part of it was actually like things got delayed because of everything that's going on. So now it's like the avalanche of everyone trying to make it, it come out during the, before yeah. the uh, holiday season. Yeah, it could be. It could very well be. Uh, well, yeah, again, let us know in the comments, how did your Spiel Digital go? And what do you think about the new Descent? Uh, what do you think about that Arkham Horror video game? Uh, are you going to get Pac-Man, Naruto, <laughs> any of that stuff? Talk to us in the comments. We want to know what's on your mind as regards the news. And we thank you for joining us. My name is Jonathan. My name is Will. This was Roll for Crit. Never miss out by liking and subscribing. And you can also check out more on our Patreon. We do weekly podcasts on Patreon. Don't you want to sign up and hear more of our voices?